looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Raising Healthy Humans, where you as a busy mom can come each week to find information on health and wellness for your family. Enjoy experts discussing tips to help raise children through each phase of life. Gather current information on nutrition and wellness and listen to Courtney, a personal trainer, health coach, movement specialist, and founder of FormFit, a community where she helps busy moms move more. Here, she provides you with movement and posture tips while sharing information you need to help raise healthy humans. Today, I had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Matt. He is a father of six and a naturopathic doctor known on the web as Dr. Wholeness. He is a father who has worked with countless patients who have struggled with their health. And it is his goal to help change lives by changing one habit at a time. Dr. Matt, thank you for joining us today on Raising Healthy Humans. Yeah, thanks for having me, Courtney. I'm pumped. Okay, so I want you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Uh, yeah, so I have a, basically a family practice in Washington State, Anglo Family Medicine, uh, and it's, it's very broad range, definitely a lot of kind of uh, more complicated illnesses that we deal with, and then just, you know, chronic disease stuff, um, and my wife is also a practicing physician with me, and, and I have six little kiddos, oh we goodness. have five, five girls, and we just had our first little boy, and he just oh. turned, um, Axel just turned one years old about two weeks ago, so um my wife is not, is not practicing as of right now because um she she homeschools our kids okay and um I mean I try to help but there's nothing like my my wife is she is the master at it um, on the homeschooling front so that's what her kind of full time gig is right now but yeah we're um yeah you know full practice and then uh, as a, a collective we basically um kind of created a slogan called Accumulate Health where uh, we essentially try to inspire motivate encourage fellow humans, patients, and then, um, you know, clients online and stuff to, uh, you know, get out of the all or nothing mindset and get in the mindset of just day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you know, accumulating health. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I would say, like, you know, you don't want to accumulate. There's a lot of things we don't want to accumulate, but health is one of the things that there's nothing wrong with accumulating it. The, the more you accumulate, you know, the better you're going to feel yourself, the better, the more, uh, available you're going to be for your family the more available you're going to be for, uh, you know, everybody, your workspace, all that, the healthier you are. So we're, um, yeah, trying to basically cut, cut that, uh, that dialogue that's been going on forever where, uh, you know, you got to fix it right now. You got to be, you know, 21 days, 28 days, 24 days, you know, this smoothie pack, this, you know, this thing, uh, cause it, it hasn't worked. We know, you know, if somebody loses 20 pounds in 20 days, there's like a 99.99% chance that six months later, they'll gain that 20 pounds back and, and be worse off than they were before they gained the 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're just really trying to, uh, you know, push this, you know, understanding. And there's like all this psychology behind it. There's all this literature behind it. And then there's our, my personal patient experience, right? And like, I'm sure your experience too with clients, uh, that it's, it's that ste those steady gains, those consistent gains, those little tweaks that you keep making to your life. Um, even my own, you know, personal story mm -hmm. is um, if, you, if you'd like to hear it, you know, sure. I, I, yeah. I, you know, basically I was 16 years old and uh, I was just like standard American kid drinking Mountain Dew, just playing, I mean, played sports and stuff and uh, candy crushing it everywhere. And my mom bought me a book. I read the book and I was like, wow, this is crazy. Cause I wanted to play college basketball. Okay. And I was like, wow, this, you can, um, there's like different ways of eating. Like I, 
what I'm eating is not like the best thing for me. What drinking Mountain Dew isn't the best thing for me. And it literally just, you know, that one little thing, which seems, you know, in light of the, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of days I've been alive, seems like one, you know, itsy bitsy, you know, all of probably four hours to read the book. Uh, but it literally changed the entire trajectory of my life. And I'm sitting here as a doctor now, you know, seeing patients um, because of that, that single thing. And so I, 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 I want to, and, and then basically after that, I, you know, I, I read more books and more books and I, you know, end up going to medical school and all that kind of stuff. But it's, you know, it didn't like, I didn't end up with a full medical practice and a, a long wait list one day that didn't, didn't just all of a sudden happen out of nowhere. Right. It was literally, it's, let's see, you know, you start with one single patient, one single patient, you get that one patient better and they tell another one. And then you get another patient better. They tell four more people. And the next thing, you know, just like, you know, helping your clients, Corinne is, you, if you can get that one person better, you can help that one person by not by some, like I said, like inoculation. That's kind of like what we get right in America. Right. A lot of times just starts with inoculated, uh -huh. boom, inoculated with health. And then once all the special, you know, juju and, and, you know, motivator is gone, it's like, it just, it doesn't last. And so um, for myself, I wanted health that lasted. And I've seen myself go from literally a Mountain Dew candy eating candy, a whole, like just deep dish pizzas and like everything you can imagine that was terrible to put in a human body. I was putting my body up to age 16. And then all of a sudden, you know, just I would, okay, I'm going to stop eating, you know, candy. I'm going to stop eating soda pop. I'm going to start eating, um, you know, maybe meat instead of, uh, and that deep dish pizza. I'm going to eat eggs in the morning instead of cereal. I'm going to, um, uh, you know, not stop drinking chocolate milk and I'm just going to drink regular milk, you know, just these little itsy bitsy changes. Right. Um, or even like I was 21 when I had my first coffee, it was actually a Frappuccino from Starbucks in Dallas, Texas. Crazy. But, um, <laughs> thankfully I waited long to have something like that. <laughs> but it, uh, uh, so you taste something like that. It's like, oh my goodness, this is so delicious. This is, mm -hmm. this is man. But, uh, you know, I, I knew I did not want to be, I, you know, when I learned what, Hey, what's in this, this is, this is terrible for you kind of thing. Uh, but to get that sugar intensity off my body, you know, I started out, I was like, okay, I'm going to have like, you know, a, a latte with say vanilla squirt in it or something. And then you get down where it's like, hey, I'm just going to have a latte with honey in it. And then you can get to where you're like, okay, I'm just going to put you know, half that amount in. Um, and next, you know, you could, you know, a lot of people, a lot of even my patients, it's crazy, but they can like drink a cup of bitter black coffee, which I'm not saying anybody needs to do that at all, or you need know, to go that, but uh, it's just that, you know, that the body is, is actually pretty cool with us taking little itsy bitsy, you know, tweaks and not even recognizing that it's happening. Right. And I, I think that um, you may have that same experience with, with clients is that it seems so meaningless in the moment, so mm -hmm. simple. So like, why even do it? But, uh, you know, I have this one patient and he, you know, he lost like 70 pounds. He's like, man, you got to start working out now. We've been doing the food thing. You got your, 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 you know, those weights off you. you he hated working out. He, okay. he just like, he's like, that's not my thing. I don't work out. And personally, that's, that's my thing. Like I love fitness. That is that's the, one of my favorite things to do is let's, we're going to play. Let's go work out. That sounds like play right there. Uh, and so we started him about, um, he's on 13 now. So yeah, like 13 weeks ago on one push up a day, okay. all you got to do is do one push up per day. So, which it seems literally completely meaningless, right? Especially if you're have any fitness at all, like one right. push up. that is what, who even cares, right? That's you're right. Doing one push up will have no impact on your life whatsoever a year from now. But if he does one push up every day. And then on the seventh day, basically once a week, he's going to increase it by one push up. So right now he's up to 13 push ups okay. in a row per day. And, you know, it was pretty amazing at 11 push ups. He, he was in for an appointment and he showed me himself doing 11 push ups in a row. And he, and he he'd barely do a, a single push up when he started out. Um, but, you know, and that's like he's getting confidence. He's feeling good about himself. Right. And people are asking him, you know, like, so what are you going to do? 52 push ups in a row, you know, at the end of the year? And he's like, he, he doesn't Maybe. know. But yeah. right, right yeah. now, all he cares about is the moment, right? Right. You know, where he's at right now. And uh, yeah, so that was a long-winded way of saying what, what I do or what, what we're about, but um, that, that's kind of what I'm about. Okay, perfect. No, and I want to go back a little bit because you mentioned that your mom handed you a book, right? Yep. Is that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So had, is your mom, like, is she in the- She's just an awesome mom. Okay. <laughs> 
I was going to say, is she, yeah. is she looking at health or anything? Working yeah, she in? was thinking. Yeah, exactly. So she was thinking, she knew I wanted to play college basketball. I mean, that was okay. like, I was, you know, every, I was going to every camp doing everything, but I was like, you know, five, probably like five, eight, and about 135 pounds at that point. Okay. Now I'm six, three and like 195. So was, I was a very different human being back then. Okay. And she was just thinking, okay, well, what could I do to help them out? I mean, maybe this, there's, you know, something I could do just to kind of help them out. Um, and she, you know, she didn't have any kind of, she was a homemaker. I mean, the best mom ever. I'm right, so right. grateful for her, but you know, she wasn't like in the health sphere or any okay. kind of, you know, special. It was literally was, you know, she'd seen it, the doctor on TV and she thought, Oh, I'll, this Dr. Don Colbert, who's actually a practicing uh, physician in Florida there. Okay. Uh, and, um, she was, she just thought, man, I'm going to, this looks like a, something I should get, I should get for my son. Who's going to the gym a lot. And like, I start, I kind of started li lifting weights and stuff then too. Okay. And she just thought it would help. And, and do you uh, remember what book it was? Like, I know yeah, it's called, it's called walking in divine health. Okay. It's no longer in print actually. Okay. And I would even say, you know, like what's funny too, is like that book right now, the doctor would agree with me that even wrote this book that like, that is not information that I would tell a patient. Right. Like it's, okay. it's not even, you know, there's a lot of stuff about soybeans being really good for us and using, getting soy stuff instead of like dairy stuff, a lot of stuff that, um, which I'm not saying there's, there can be benefits to soybeans in certain cases for sure. But, um, the, a lot of what was in that book, um, isn't like, you know, not something I, I personally would promote a ton of other than, I mean, it's talking about water and eating vegetables and fruit. Of course, those are all good things, right. but, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's the thing too, you know, the book was so stinking simple, right? You know, it was just, I feel like a lot of times we feel like we need to, um, have everything figured out, you know, read some big encyclopedia of health and then, you know, get all these little, you know, our meals have to be perfect and they have to be the right ratios of macronutrients and the right ratios of fruits to vegetables to meat to, you know, our starches and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, no, I don't think we got to do that. And there's, you know, the pe most people who are, enjoying just life mm -hmm. and are really vital and invigorated and feel good uh you know they're not they aren't counting every last little thing um you know and, and you know like having an engineering degree to uh, you know figure out their food plans and their exercise plans and all that uh not that they're i mean i do work with some professional athletes and stuff and there are you know it does get more 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 crazy you could say or more sophisticated um but uh it, it, you know we got to start out simple and most of us you know, it's like, Hey, instead of going to McDonald's, let's, let's make dinner at home. Even if it's, you know, similar to what you would have gotten at McDonald's, if you made it at home, it's going to be twice as you know healthy for you kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Cause you're going to be using the better oils and right. the better meat and mm -hmm. yeah, everything. For sure. Um, okay. So you mentioned that you like to take it very small. And I love how you mentioned, like you started with the Frappuccino and then maybe you just have a little bit of syrup in there or one pump mm. instead of the three that they put in that right. type of thing. And just slowly back backing down with how you're changing your habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's great. Was, Go ahead. Well, yeah, I was just going to say the, um, another thing is, uh, so like chocolate chip cookies, uh -huh. I mean, I would love, probably if there's any dessert I was going to eat, other than maybe a chocolate ice cream, a chocolate chip cookie just is just right. You know, a well-made chocolate chip cookie, but you know, like standard Betty Crocker recipe for a chocolate chip cookie, which I, of course I had no idea this because I never made chocolate chip cookies. It was like my mom, I have four sisters. They maybe were making it or, or then my wife. Um, and there's like four cups of sugar or, you know, two cups of white sugar in these chocolate chip cookies in, in a batch. Mm -hmm. And no human being needs, needs, needs that. And, and what we realized is now, um, my wife, you know, she makes some chocolate chip cookies. Maybe there's like, um, in an entire batch, I'd be like a quarter of a cup, of like, you know, uh, unrefined coconut sugar or say honey or maple syrup or something like that. You know, it's such a minuscule amount compared to what say a recipe would, would ask for. And yet it tastes delicious, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't start out that way. I would have, if I was eating Skittles, Sure. You know, eating that now, you know, this quarter cup chocolate chip cookie would not have tasted very sweet, but when you just, you know, slowly, but surely drop that down, mm -hmm. it's like wherever you're at, if, you, if you're eating, say the two cups of sugar in your chocolate chip cookies and you turn it into a cup and three quarters and you're winning. Yeah. Right? It's like you're, you're ahead, you're ahead of where you would have been. I mean, like that's, that's give yourself a high five and, and this is exciting times. 
and you yeah. can, you know, can, can slowly be, be dropping that down. Well, and I don't think people realize um, that you, like you said, you can do this slowly and it does definitely, it doesn't really make a difference. My right. mom has mm-hmm. a banana bread that she uses, makes a lot. And she'll, I think it's the same kind of thing. It's like four cups of sugar, like ridiculous. <laughs> and I cut it down to half and yeah. okay, maybe it wasn't the same. It didn't have quite the caramelization that hers had, but it was uh-huh. still just as good. And it, that still had a ton of sugar in it. So you can still work where you slowly get down to what, you know, the more, I don't want to say recommended, but yeah, like a healthier version. A reasonable. Of, yes. And then going <laughs> from processed white sugar to more, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, coconut sugar and that type of thing to slowly change out. And in the beginning, yeah. that would probably be difficult for some people. But as you start to, your taste buds change and you mm-hmm. are able to, um, sorry, there's lots going on. Um, you are able to get used to that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the body's all about adaptation. Yeah. It's, it's, it's totally happy. It only knows what we, what we give it whatever inputs we give it to it, that's what it knows. And so, um, yeah, I mean, if we, it is, it is wild. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, seriously, it's mind boggling to me. I mean, most of my patients and even like a lot of people, friends and stuff went, cause they didn't know me when I was a teenager would have, would think, oh, it's just so easy for you to like, you know, eat a salad and, and meat and sweet potatoes. And that's like, you like that, or, you know, salmon and, and grilled asparagus sounds awesome. And and think that, oh, that's just Matt. You know, that's just, this is how I, how I am. That's how I'm, that's my taste buds. I, I, I could never, you know, find enjoyment in that. Like I find enjoyment in my, um, you know, my pepperoni pizza and French fries or whatever. Um, but it is crazy. Like little by little, I mean, I would never eat, um, was this, uh, um, like guacamole or tomatoes or, um, I mean, even like, broccoli or kale or you know anything i would i would literally never eat those things growing up i mean like right. fruit i might eat grapes bananas oranges sure i'll eat those but um now i mean like that sounds awesome like you know we had this we have like taco tuesday on t- tuesday nights and you know we have just it's like all these like fermented cabbages and stuff that different people bring over and i'm like this stuff is just so delicious and that was you know that was not part of my being whatsoever but um it didn't happen overnight either you know, it's, that's like 20 years later, we're talking about 24 right. years later. Right. So it's, uh, the, um, that's why I feel like, you know, people don't, don't feel like it has to all happen right now. Right. Cause if you put all that pressure on yourself, like you're going to run out of willpower mm-hmm. and you're, and then you're just going to be ticked off of yourself. You're going to lose confidence that you can, you know, do what you want to do or that you do what you say you're going to do for yourself. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's just going to put you in a bigger and bigger hole. So I, that's where, uh, yeah, just being okay with growing every single day and seeing mm-hmm. that, wow, I am growing. My health trajectory is getting, you know, where I wanted to go. It's, it's, it's growing as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it, it's just shocking, you know, where we can, where we can end up. Right. Well, in, like you had mentioned with, um, the different foods on the plate earlier mm-hmm. in regards to like, people are overthinking this so much. And I think a <laughs> lot of times we take information that we've learned, Um, where these people are working with professional athletes and things Mm. like that, we do not all need to make sure that we're doing all of these things that maybe they're doing. Right. And, um, you know, this counting macros and all of this different stuff, it not saying that that's wrong, but it definitely takes the enjoyment out of a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to be able to not have to think about it that way and just focus on, you know, can I get more vegetables onto my plate? Yeah. That would be just a great way to start. Mm-hmm. But do that you have, huge. do you have recommendations of, you know, the, this is where I start with my uh, patients or do you I kind mean, of look at it independently with each individual? I mean, there definitely is yeah, a lot of independence, um, you know, depending on you know, some, so many people have different sensitivities and stuff. Like for myself, I couldn't tell you that I'm, there's some food I'm sensitive to, you know, I, I, most foods I eat, even if it was junk, I wouldn't have like some kind of, you know, net, 
stomach pain or reaction. I mean, I wouldn't feel awesome for sure. Like I don't eat, you know, cake at birthdays usually because I just don't feel good afterwards. Right. Um, even if it's, you know, and my family, they make all, you know, from scratch stuff and still just for whatever reason, I, I just really never felt that great, but it's, um, so yeah, I mean, it definitely is pretty individualized, but, uh, I would say for most people these days, one, because most people have sugar addictions to some mm-hmm. degree, or like, I would say chip, <laughs> corn chip addictions, so something that that crunchy, salty, vegetable, oily, sugary, melee, you know, one of those in there is, I mean, I'm often, you know, pushing them towards, okay, where can we, one, drop those out? Because we don't want to eat vegetable oils. You know, it's just, that's, that's just essentially torturing your body. Mm-hmm. Um, so where can we switch out? Say if you're having cereal for breakfast, you know, and you're instantly spiking your, no matter how many organic non-GMO gluten-free, you know, special stickers that it has on there and, and precious colorings, it's still going to spike your blood sugar. It's going to spike your insulin level. And you're just not going to feel as awesome as you would feel otherwise. Right. So, you know, can we have some meat? Let's have some like, you know, have it, have an egg, a couple eggs, um, or maybe have some, you know, nuts and seeds or berries or something like that cool. for breakfast. Um, or if you're getting, you know, people eat granola from the store, but that's like, okay, there's, you know, at a minimum 15 grams of sugar per serving. And that serving is probably like a quarter of a cup. Right. So, you know, most people are getting like, you know, 60 grams of sugar to start out the morning and they think they're doing something healthy for themselves, which is, that's, you know, one of my big pet peeves about, you know, a lot of it is there's so many people trying to help themselves out that mm-hmm. they're putting out so much effort and they think they're doing themselves, you know, a favor and they have no idea that no, you know, they have just been marketed to. Right. You know, there's these psychologists and psychiatrists on these boards that are figuring out how can we essentially get these people to buy our stuff and, and think that they're helping themselves out. Um, and, uh, you know, it's super sad because, uh, you know, it's just happening nonstop. And these people aren't getting results. Right. right? So that I've been doing all this. I've been eating perfect, doing all this good stuff for myself. I'm not getting the results, you know, whatsoever. Uh, you know, I just literally had a patient call on the other day who forever, you know, they were saying like, they're 60 something years old, or actually, sorry, this patient is 91 years old. Um, She just turned 91. She was forever. She said like 60 years. She's like been trying to like lose this 30 pounds that she's had on her body ever since she had her first kid. And um, about a year ago, we did this thing called the shake the sugar challenge, which is basically where we got rid of for, for 49 days. We didn't eat any added sugars whatsoever. Um, You know, fruit was good to go, but if there's added sugar to anything, anything that's not, you know, actually found in the whole food, then you didn't, you didn't eat it. And so she just gets rid of all these, everything that had added sugar. So that was like, like granola was something she would eat. There was a couple of breads she thought were health, you know, good for her, but they had added sugar in it. Um, you know, some crackers that were supposed to, you know, whole food, organic, all that kind of stuff. And she, so she got rid of those because there was a couple grams of sugar in there. And amazingly enough, so she was 90 then she's 91 now. And you know, she lost like 30 pounds during that time frame, And she says, it's just crazy. She's done literally different diets her whole life. So like nothing works for her. And now it's been over a year that, and she could care less about eating that stuff. She loves eating whole foods and, and she would have eaten the whole foods before, you know, I just kind of gone that road. Didn't realize that, you know, all these things she thought was healthy right. that were basically of the process variety because they've mm-hmm. been packaged that way. Mm-hmm. Um, she was consuming, you know, fairly regularly. And just by getting rid of those, not starving herself, you know, not counting calories, not counting macros, you know, none of that stuff that we hear in in a lot of these um, circles we're in um, and a lot of people are doing literally just changed up those, those getting rid of those added sugars. And, you know, she still gets to eat fruit all she wants and and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But as I mean, to lose fat, 91 pounds, at 90 years old to lose 30 pounds of, of fat, mm-hmm. you know, is, is crazy, right? Yeah. And that's not something that happens every day. Right. Um, and, uh, and, she, and she's so vital. She's, you know, she wants to do life. Her mind's really strong. You know, she's got all this going for her. She just felt like, man, um, I hate that. I, I know I've been, this is something I wish I would have known, you know, 30 years ago and I could just got rid of it. Cause I would have. Right. So I think that's, um, yeah, you know, it is just trying to get from that. We were asking about what's the first step is okay. Um, you know, patient number one, how can we clear out, you know, some of these processed boxed items? Let's take one meal. Let's just get that one meal where it's literally a whole food substance you're consuming. You know, it's fruit, it's vegetables, it's meat, it's nuts, it's seeds. You know, if you can handle beans or lentils, it's beans or lentils. Um, But let's just, let's start with that one meal. Let's get that one meal taken care of. Once you feel good about that, you know, 
I mean, some people can do more meals than, than that, but uh, at least let's get four weeks under our belt and just crushing it with that one meal. And then let's get the next meal under our belt uh, kind of thing. And, uh, you know, not worrying about, I got to eat six meals a day and, you know, snacks between everything. Um, there's some people that does, that does help, you know, how it works for them, but it's not, you know, that's like, that's not science. That's just an idea. And a lot of the things we think are science are ideas. And it's not like there's all these, you know, nutrition journal, journal articles that show that if you eat six meals a day versus three meals a day versus two meals a day, um, there's some, you know, massive benefit in metabolism or weight loss or especially long-term, you know, weight loss and that kind of stuff. So. Right. Well, and I've, I've been hearing a lot recently that the longer you can extend, and I don't mean you have to specifically go into like full on intermittent fasting, but mm. the longer you can extend that, it yeah. helps with blood sugar. Totally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you can have that, that basically kind of time restricted eating mm-hmm. where you're, um, you know, uh, you know, giving yourself anywhere, I mean, pretty much, yeah, I get around 14 hours. It does that, that kind of that fasted window. Right. Um, it does seem like that's where most of the insulin sensitizing and growth hormone effects and all that kind of start really percolating and, and, and benefiting a, a person. And, you know, most people find that, wow, that's, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's not that big a deal actually. Yeah. <laughs> when, when they, when they start looking at it, it's just, we know we're, we're programmed to do so many things. And, uh, and maybe, you know, it's like, okay, it's, which that is a point you bring up, you know, when a, a patient thinks about say intermittent fasting or time restricted eating, and they're like, okay, normally I would, I would eat, you know, a snack or something at nine 30 at night. Cause just kind of like, you know, it's been a few hours since I ate dinner and I'm, you know, they're kind of in a bored state mm-hmm. plus, you know, by the end of the day, your willpower is shot. So you really don't, can't decide what you want to do, um, anymore, especially on the good side of things. Um, but you know, maybe they're watching a show or something. And th- so they're still up. However, when they're doing like time restricted eating, they're like, okay, you know, I'm finished eating at six o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like they're cutting calories in. They're just like, that's when they stop eating at six o'clock at night. Now, instead of like, you know, staying up to 11 o'clock at night, because you know, there's, there's that food that happened, you know, at nine 30 or whatever. Now they're all about, okay, I'll go to bed at 10 o'clock. I'm going to go to bed at nine o'clock. And it's, it's like all these other benefits are starting to, 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 to come into play because of, you know, kind of setting up that window. So yeah, there's, there's lots of advantages to that. Okay. So going into that as well. So you mentioned nutrition, like that seems to be where you kind of start. Mm-hmm. What other benefits sleeping? What would you say are those habits that you try to ensure that your patients are doing and you don't have to go, I, you know, there's a litany Holy. of them, but <laughs> like, what would you say the top three to do? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, yeah. So we get the food, we get the food routine going mm-hmm. and then, um, which yeah, cause that could be like 400 podcasts <laughs> there, but, um, <laughs> uh, and then I would, I would definitely say that the exercise component, you know, getting, having a set time where you do do, you know, some little physical exertion where you're, you're going beyond what your normal life is. Okay. Because, uh, it's, you know, fitness is so rewarding. And one of the things, uh, and I even have a little program for this is like to be able to do a pull-up, you know, a person being able to do pull their body weight, um, or their chin up over a bar from a dead hang is so exhilarating for humans. Um, and you know, every patient I've had that's been able to go from not being able to do a pull-up to being able to do a pull-up, it's like, they'll go and quit their job. They'll go and like, get out of some care relationship. They'll go and go get this interview they never they never never do before they'll they'll like join the gym and they were so they had so little confidence to do that before because you know being able to do something you know very objective i can't pull myself up over a bar now i can pull myself up over a bar mm-hmm. it seems dumb you know in light of eternity i would say you know it seems like completely meaningless but it is wild what what it does for a person's confidence um when they go from not being able to do that to being able to do that uh and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge proponent, I would say step two, um, and, or it's usually like step one and a half. I'm, I'm definitely usually talking about, about, um, exercise in the, in the first visit as well, okay. but, um, is, uh, yeah, you know, let's, let's get some, let's get a routine going. And it, um, you know, there's this, uh, this study of keystone habits, uh, where they see, they show that if you were to do, um, say like you pick Friday morning at 10 30 AM, uh, I'm going to do, you know, 20 minutes of physical exertion. And every Friday morning at 10 30 AM, you do that outside of like an atomic bomb <laughs> hitting your home or something that six months from now. So you don't do anything else 
all you did was just at 10 30 on Friday morning. I don't, I got my workout in and okay. I just don't miss that six months from now. Like you'll be adding all these other things to your life. This is what they found in these, these, these study um, participants that they were adding other things. Like they were, they were taking more time for like reading instead of watching TV. They were more conscious about, you know, some of the meals they were doing. There was like relational stuff they were fixing. There was, um, you know, their, their sleep and like time in a sleep and getting to bed earlier and waking up or all these things they were starting to literally unconscious. Like these were not conscious behaviors they were making. They were like, I'm going to try to take my, my sleep now. No, they would just start doing it because of that one single thing that they, they dialed in that one single keystone habit, which exercise. I mean, there's, there's part of it, like going to church on a Sunday is another one that seemed like it was pretty helpful, mm -hmm. but um, the exercise across the board, and like the, the one single thing, it's like, we know consciously and subconsciously when we do physical activity is to our benefit. Right. There's like every part of our being says, this is helping me. Thank you so much. Um, even if it's not like you get this great euphoria from exercise, our being knows this is to our benefit. And so, um, yeah, I, I try, I definitely try to make that a, I think if you had the food part going and then, you know, you, you don't over, um, spend your willpower mm -hmm. and you get, you know, that, that, um, it could be five minutes. It could be that, like I said, that one push up a day, um, and then, or the, you know, 20 minutes, one time a week, you just get this routine going. You just, you know, you think about, okay, right now, what can I do? Don't worry about tomorrow. We don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You can't do anything about the past. Like, okay, what could I do today? Let's, okay, boom. It's Friday, it's 10, 30 a.m. That's when I do my workout. I'm, I'm gonna do it. Uh, and then don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I just literally made this little video of myself working out this morning um, before this in my garage with um, my older girls. My wife were at violin practice. And so I have um, my twin girls who are three years old and my little guy who's one, one years old. And they're just like walking around in my small garage and I'm working out in there. And like, I got to I mean, sometimes not set careful how I'm setting the weight down. Cause my little guy came running through or something, but it's like that, is, you know, for a lot of patients um, I see is it's, it's like, well, I just, I don't have time. I can't, can't do it. You know, kids and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it is, it's okay for it not to be perfect. Like I'm not trying to play college basketball anymore. I'm not trying to be a professional athlete or like do physique competitions or, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be super healthy and feel awesome. Right. And you can feel awesome and, you know, be in really good shape. Uh, and it not be like, I got to do the workout. So I was doing every minute on the minute. And so, you know, I do a different movement every, every minute mm -hmm. um, for this 20 minute time frame. And I can't, but I, <laughs> but um, like my little guy's there and my girl was saying something and, and, um, and I, I want to be, you know, I'm, I'm, I am their dad and they're, they're young. So they need my attention. Um, but, uh, I could have, you know, like I wasn't getting every, you know, sometimes it's a minute 30 instead of on the minute. Right. And, but that's like, who cares? That's, a, that's fine. I still, I got to get a workout in. Um, and it's, it's okay to not have everything, you know, just perfect. And I like, I got an hour at the gym. I did my cardio. Then I did my strength training. Then I you know, did my sauna afterwards. Um, those are, that'd be great. But, um, <laughs> for, um, you know, if you're working, you know, I'm, I would say generally, you know, just like an influencer out there who has, you know, four hours every morning to set up their whole you know morning routine, then um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna look a little different. And it, right. it doesn't, you don't even have to do all that stuff, right? Right. Yeah. Well, and the added benefit, I mean, your children are seeing that this is just a natural part of what you're doing. So they're 100%. getting that benefit as well. And I'm right. sure I don't, I know you said your littlest is a year, but you're mm -hmm. older too, or the mm -hmm. two that were there, the twins. Yeah, three years. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, I'm sure that they were trying to do some of the exercises with you or running around you or things oh, like yeah. that. So that you're then teaching them so much with that as well. Oh yeah. They're always, they're always asking when, when are we can do the workout? Yeah. Daddy, daddy, <laughs> doing your workout. And they're, they're, they're like, okay, you know, they want to like get it, get on. And they, they like jumping on boxes and they're like, you know, pulling on the rings and, you know, doing burpees and that kind of stuff. So they're, they just start doing their, what they think is their part of the workout. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do think, you know, that's a big thing I was thinking about this morning is, um, you know, how, how do we get our kids mm -hmm. to basically do the habits we want them to do or things we know are going to be most beneficial for them? Mm -hmm. how, how do we, how do we make that easy to do? And, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't come from telling them to do stuff. Right. Right. It comes from us being an example mm -hmm. and just, you know, kind of creating that, that opportunity, creating that space uh, versus, you know, 
we, for instance, my three older girls, basically they do a hundred jump ropes every day. Okay. Um, just as part of, you know, it literally takes them, you know, now like less than a minute to do that um, because they've been doing it for so long. But, um, and it's, it's just a thing, you know, it's just like a routine they do. And, uh, um, but originally, you know, if I just like take girls, go do that. And I mean, sometimes they will, but most of the time I'm like, I'm going to be out there and I'm doing, you know, some other little workout and like, they're just do it while I'm, while I was doing something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so it's just like, it's no big deal. Um, and it's like, it's actually enjoyable. And they, they want to do tricks now. They want to do all this kind of stuff. Uh, as opposed to, um, just, just so many times I, I, you know, the patients come in and with the parent and it's like the parents, like, I'm going to go do my thing out here and you do your thing, you know, somewhere else mm -hmm. at some other time for the, you know, the kids, especially the little kids. And it's just, um, they don't even like you, the, the little kids don't even realize that, you know, the parent, Oh mom, you, you're, uh, like you're doing Pilates every day or you're doing yoga or you're doing, you know, this, um, you know, fitness routine or your, you know, your online class or whatever you're doing. I didn't really, you know, you don't even know because right. it's almost like parents are trying to like, I know, I mean, I know I'm sure, you know, a mom or a, uh, even a dad wants to like have that time to like re recover from maybe their day day or whatever, or um, just like that time for themselves. But um, I personally find that it's um, when I finally kind of got out of that idea that mm -hmm. my workouts have to be just, just right set up. You know, I got to be able to use a barbell every time, or if it says the barbell, you know, no, like I'll just use dumbbells. I mean, 90% of the time I use dumbbells or kettlebells now versus right. a barbell because the right. barbell is huge. I'm probably gonna hit one of my kids. Whereas <laughs> there's much better control with the dumbbells or kettlebells. Uh, but it doesn't, um, it actually makes, makes the whole experience much richer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having, having the kids around and, and being able to do it with them and then actually enjoying it, mm -hmm. you know, if I write a workout up on the board for my, like one specific for my kids, which we do this often, it's like, they're like giggling and laughing when they're doing it. And they're, it's like most adults would find it really challenging, um, you know, what they're doing, but it's just, it's fun for them. Uh, because they, they know, um, I think, cause they know we, they see us enjoying it. And then, you know, their kids, kids love running around and jumping around and, and all that. So, right. Okay. So what would you say to the mom who is saying like, I don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't get a workout in. Like I just, I go totally. from morning to night. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? Yeah, I, I definitely hear that on the regular. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think like 75% of my patient population is females. Okay. And um, I would just say, well, one example is, um, I mean, you just, we got to figure out like what we value, right? Um, right. I mean, pretty much all of us have probably looked at her phone, got on some social media, you know, check her email or messages for no reason. You know, literally, um, I was just this Craig Rochelle and he was talking about how I think there was like Duke University or Harvard is like 2000 times a day or something. The average, you know, American looks at their phone or Jeez. touches their phone. It's just it's just insane, it, which yeah. I was like, I hate that. But, you know, I'm, I'm literally I'm part of that. Mm -hmm. and, and I, mm -hmm. I don't want to be, but I am part of that right now. Uh, so I think there's the, um, so that's like, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, 20 minutes. All these are just like accumulating throughout the day. And next, you know, the day's over and like, oh man, I, I couldn't get a workout in. Uh, so I would say one, you know, consider your time. Um, two, I mean, my wife, so we have six, I said, we have six kids. She's mm -hmm. still breastfeeding okay. and, um, our one-year-old and, uh, you know, she will go in at about like eight, eight thirty into our garage. Um, I mean, she often will invite over, um, there's a few girls in our neighborhood. It's really kind of fun. They'll, they'll come over and even do workouts with her and bring their kids and stuff. Um, and a lot of them are really small and, uh, you know, you just, you get a workout in I mean, look, right. write it on the board and, and do the workout. And maybe it takes 20 minutes, maybe it takes 15 minutes, maybe it's 30 minutes. Maybe, um, it's like, okay, pile the kids in with their scooters and we walk down the, walk down the, um, you know, the street, you know, a mile or so kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, so there is. I mean, I have not met anyone other than some of my patients who are, you know, like their legs don't work or they have MS or, you know, where it's like, it is really, really challenging for them to do what I think would be awesome for them to do. Right. But even that, at that, there's like, there's always something we can do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's literally like we could do, um, for instance, I have this patient with this serious, um, low back knee issue, right. Uh, knee, low back and knee issues. And they literally, they can't, they really can't do anything that has to do with their legs. And they're in this aggressive physical therapy routine. I was like, okay. You could though, like you could do dumbbell curls with your arms and that would not hurt you. Right. right. Like, yeah. Um, you could like, you know, 
do some like band presses. You could do, you know, push up against the wall. You could, there are things we could do and we could set up a little routine and, and they, they agree that yes, you know, they're, they're finding excuses. Um, when the thing is those excuses, they just, they won't get us anywhere we want to get to. Right. Right. Uh, so I would say, yeah, generally to the mom, you are one, you're super capable. You deserve it. You're, and you're so glad you did it. Um, and it's, uh, it's okay if it's not perfect because it's probably not going to be perfect. Um, but if you get yourself, you know, five minutes and say, okay, five minutes, my, you know, if your kids are taking a nap, your kids went to the bathroom or something, be okay with being like, I'm going to do, for instance, uh, for myself yesterday. So we went and visited a family at their house and I got off work and it literally, I just basically came home and we're pretty much leaving. So I go change my clothes. I did a set of pull-ups to failure and a set of ring dips to failure and walked in because I hadn't literally done anything that day. Right. Um, and I was like, I'm going to go sit down and eat dinner with these people. And I'm not, and just be talking one. It helps me recalibrate my brain mm -hmm. after just talking to patients all day. But two, it's just like, it feels so good to have done something. Mm -hmm. So I did that took less than two minutes and I, um, I didn't get sweaty at all, which is a <laughs> huge thing for me because I sweat really good. Um, but those, all that little stuff, it just keeps adding up yeah. and you know don't you just yeah i think um if you can do a class you can do all this stuff you know i, I know you do a lot of training people and so you know, if, if you do that that is amazing right but um it's okay if you can't do it every day that's what i would tell myself it is okay i'm just gonna do a set of air squats to failure right now and right. call it a good for today yeah well and i think you brought in a key component is that um a lot of moms will also say like oh i don't have time to go get changed and mm. you know i i, I don't want to get sweaty like totally, maybe yeah. i have to go do something but like you said you did something for two minutes and you didn't get sweaty so it doesn't right. mean you have to go get changed into your workout gear totally yep no you're so um, right that's yeah. so good okay so I want to know a little bit about this iron supplement that you have. Talk to me about sure. this because I know as women, this is something, I mean, I've struggled with iron. I had, um, anemia for a period of time after wow. my third. So I want to hear about this. Yeah. So we had a, um, well, basically my wife, when, we're, when she was pregnant with the twins, uh, about four years ago now. She was really anemic and, um, I was, you know, I basically can get my hands on the best stuff available and, and, and we couldn't make any difference. In fact, her iron just kept on going down and she just felt horrible, uh, you know, massive fatigue. She was having headaches all the time. She couldn't keep food down. It was just, um, yeah, it was really, really getting problematic. And we have our, we have home births, um, and we want to have the twins at home, which is, I know it sounds kind of crazy. Um, but, uh, we did do that. Um, but you can't, they, the midwives will not let you have a home birth if you're anemic. Okay. Um, it's just too much liability and stuff. So you have to have a ferritin basically, at least our midwife wanted over 21. Okay. Um, and my wife was at nine. And so, um, we, uh, I basically, I, I talked to some friends who were scientists and stuff and, and, um, knew about some technology that was available and, uh, related to basically better absorption and better utilization of iron okay. in, uh, in kind of in a supplemental form. Mm -hmm. And so I talked um, to the particular scientist in Utah and he basically gave me just some raw, raw ingredient to, to try it for my wife. And amazingly enough, we checked her levels and then I checked her levels again, 31 days later, and it went from nine to 23. And, um, and this is like 30 milligrams of elemental iron, which is not very much iron at all in okay. supplemental form. And previously she'd been taking up to 90 milligrams and these, uh, of these other types of iron and her, her ferritin just kept on going down hmm. and, and she wasn't getting black stools anymore. She wasn't getting nausea from the iron. Her, her stomach wasn't hurting. She wasn't getting these headaches from the iron anymore. Like all, she was just feeling awesome now. Yeah. Um, and this was her third trimester, which is where your, your blood volume is really you're expanding and your, the babies are, especially twins are just sucking up, you know, tons of nutrition. So it was, it was our midwife was like shocked and she'd already delivered like 3000 babies. She was kind of, she's one of the, she's retired now, but she was one of the really big midwives in Washington state back then. Um, and, um, so I was like, oh my goodness, this is wild. Uh, you know, this is like right in my face. This is like one of those stories where you hear people say like, you know, you have this real personal thing that happened to you mm -hmm. and then you change, you change the world afterwards kind of thing. Uh, so I, I, I talked to him and figured out, okay, how can I basically turn this into a supplement? So, because I want to try this on patients, this is like I have all these patients, 
who I don't even want to give iron to, because, but they are anemic and they need it because they're just going to say their stomach hurts. You know, they don't feel good. Their, their body aches. They, they hate it. They're nauseous from taking the iron. Um, and, uh, and so I was able to basically, um, formulate, change up the formula a little bit, um, and make sure there's all like natural active ingredients in there. And then came out based with, basically with a product about three and a half years ago now called blood vitality, which basically has, um, uh, the iron in a, a, a matrix of rice protein. So it's like hidden within the rice protein. Okay. So you're basically getting the iron, like it's a whole food substance, kind of okay. like you'd get, say, you know, a piece of meat or beef or, um, that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, we just saw like ridiculous results. So I ended up doing a clinical trial at my clinic and, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been <laughs> awesome because we just get testimony after testimony after testimony. And, um, I feel fantastic about, about, um, giving, uh, or recommending it to my patients now because, you know, one, they don't have side effects Two, their, they get the results they want. Um, and, uh, I even have a, a patient who is set for a blood transfusion. So not nice. just an iron infusion, but a blood transfusion because she was so anemic, oh, wow. but she was, she was really concerned about potential of, you know, there is a lot of potential issues mm-hmm. with, you know, receiving somebody else's blood. Mm-hmm. Um, and she just did not want to go that route. She still wanted to have more children. We just thought, man, you know, what might happen? And uh, so she came to our office because she heard about this blood vitality from another friend of hers, but she wanted to make sure it would, it would, it would be okay for her. And so she started taking it. And um, basically one month later, all her levels had normalized and she was, she didn't like, she, you know, she wasn't even, even, she didn't need anything anymore. Her, she had no anemia whatsoever. Um, and so now she's, she has a huge voice out there in the world for um, recommending blood vitality. People are saying, you know, this is, this is an awesome opportunity um, for you to uh, get your iron levels up and uh, you know, not, not have issues. Cause yeah, it's, it's super iron deficiency. You know, it's so underreported mm-hmm. and, you know, so many women are walking around, they're depressed, they're anxious, heart palpitations, shortness of breath, just like, you know, underperforming in life and just feeling like, you know, I guess this is just how I am. It's just motherhood. It's just, you know, being a mother and working and, and working out. I'm just, I guess this is just how it is. Uh, when in reality, you know, iron deficiency, it's 2 billion people on earth are iron deficient. Wow. And, uh, you know, if, if you're probably iron deficient, if you're a female, you're menstruating. And you do any kind of sports, the likelihood if you're not essentially taking an iron or, you know, really careful about your enough, you know, red meat and taking stuff like that, um, you probably are, you probably aren't efficient. Yeah. Um, you know, that would, that would be very, very normal, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, why is that? Uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of um, theories as to why it's challenging for the body to uptake iron. Um, Cause I'm sure, you know, 300, 400, 500 years, maybe a thousand years ago, that probably wasn't quite the issue. But um, yeah, there's, there's definitely something that's happened where our bodies have more challenges, but unfortunately we haven't adapted in some other way to make up for that right. because um, all the hair loss, the dizziness, all that kind of stuff is still happening. So yeah, it's a, it's been really, really, really fun. Huh. Okay. So is it a powder form? Uh, it comes in a capsule. Capsule. Okay. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, some, some even, you know, children use it um, or people that just don't like swollen capsules. They literally, you just open it up and put it on your smoothie on your your salad on your meat on your eggs whatever because it is it's like taking like a couple milligrams of rice protein essentially okay. um it is what it is so it doesn't okay. essentially tasteless okay and is it something where you're needing to also then go get your iron levels checked because there's a chance of too much iron in your system or does it because it's more natural? yeah i mean i would always i would always um you know i think any mineral especially but especially iron um, I would definitely check, you know, get your levels checked Okay. one to make sure you need it. Cause you don't want to take iron if you don't need it. Right. Um, iron, iron can be super inflammatory and oxidative to the body as well. Mm. Um, although I would say that's, um, that's what, cause there is this condition called hemochromatosis, okay. um, where essentially you hold on to way too much iron and you just absorb it like crazy. But, um, that is, uh, because there's con- this condition out there often doctors, um, and, and patients will be just so concerned about, you know, taking iron because mm-hmm. they don't want this thing happening to them when like, that's not, that's not, even though it's out there, that's not the common thing. Okay. Um, and all the bad stuff that would happen because of that, all that bad stuff will happen to you as well. If you're, um, you know, deficient in iron. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, if you get your levels checked, you can, you know, check your ferritin level. That's kind of the, the golden standard. The ferritin is, okay. um, and you know, you make sure generally speaking, I try to keep it at least above 50. 
um, depending on their exercise level. A lot of people do better if there's like 70 to 120. Um, but uh, if it's, yeah, you know, basically under 30, your bone marrow starts saying, hey, we're, we're gonna like slow down red blood cell production because we're running out of resources here. Um, and if you look at a lab, most labs actually will have it at 15 or 21 being the low end. So you, you really have to be um, your own advocate when it comes to iron. Um, and uh, I mean, I've made a lot of videos on this and there's, you know, there's, there's groups of tens of thousands on like Facebook and stuff, these private groups on talking about how terrible doctors are because I've been iron deficient forever and no, and no one ever helped me out. And they still don't believe me um, because it's, uh, we often look at uh, the CBC, which is just telling you if you're actually iron deficient anemia, um, okay. even though uh, if you look at the ferritin level, it's, it's low, but it hasn't shown up in the CBC yet. And so a person will be iron deficient, but not called anemic yet. Mm -hmm. And so that's not considered like, um, in a lot of places, not considered a, a, a reason to replete iron levels. When the person might have be losing hair, like I said, be depressed, having palpitations, feeling like they can't catch their breath when they're working out. Um, and they're, you know, their heart rate's always at 95 when it should be at, you know, 70 kind of thing um, when they're just resting. So there's, um, yeah, there's a whole, there's a lot of, uh, and I feel like it's, it's kind of coming to the surface a little bit more now, but um, there's, there's a lot of overlooking of iron deficiency, unfortunately, and just, you know, some people underperforming when uh, it, there's like, there's literally no need for it whatsoever. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. Um, do you know, like, why is it when you work out, you need more iron? Do you know that information or? Uh, for sure. I mean, you, you can lose, lose iron via sweat. It, okay. Um, it, and then, I mean, if you run, so like every, when you hit your foot on the ground, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's this thing called um, uh, iron deficiency hemoly hemo hemolysis, which is basically that where the capillaries in your feet break and you lose iron that way. Um, and so uh, it's, it sounds like, wow, you know, that's kind of crazy, but um, it happens all the time. Even male runners, um, you know, they can become iron deficient literally from their foot hitting the ground over and over and over and over again. Um, and so, and then you're just, you know, generally, I mean, the more, more, more sweat, more exertion, um, even, you know, if you're exercising intensely, you know, you get, you'll get micro bleeding in the, uh, in, in the intestines and that kind of stuff, which isn't like horrible for us by any means, but you will, you'll lose blood that way. Um, and, and blood or iron is following blood, you know, it's part of the red blood cell. So, right. And then women probably should get checked. I feel like, you know, it's very difficult for us to maybe test our iron because we might be right above here, but after menstruation, it really drops us down low. So to make totally. sure that you're, do you have a recommendation on when you should get blood work done for that? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, you know, if a, if a patient is a female patient, if she's feeling that, uh, you know, man, I'm just like so tired during menstruation. Um, and then, you know, even like you know, th that first one to 10 days, like, wow, I'm just so exhausted. You really want to get your, I would get your iron levels checked, you know, during that time frame. Okay. Um, because you're, you're potentially, you know, you're getting, you're going just below and then you slowly start, you know, building the next, right. you know, three weeks or so. Um, and then it, you're, you're back down again. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so if you're, once you start, um, it, I would say the thing is about, if you start supplementing with iron, you want to do it at the exact same time in your blood. So if you do it, you know, the day before your period or a week before your period or during your period, you, you want to make that the same because if you check your blood, you know, the, say your ferritin or your iron levels, like day 24 of your cycle, and you don't start menstruating until day 28. Um, and then the next time you check it, you know, day four of your cycle of your period, your um, those levels are going to be, you, you really can't compare them because one right. of them you're in the middle of bleeding and the other one you've been store, you know, storing up for three weeks. Right. Um, so definitely want to be consistent, um, whichever time frame you decide. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much for all of that information. Okay. Oh, so sure. where can we find you? Um, yeah. I mean, uh, anything that says DR, DR wholeness. So DR wholeness.com. And then like all the at DR wholeness on like Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, Um, those are the, the main places, but DR wholeness.com is, um, yeah. And, and YouTube as well. If you type in DR wholeness, um, that's, that's where you'll, you'll find me. Okay. Perfect. Anything else you'd like our listeners to know before you leave? Um, no, I just, I would start little, 
be okay with it being so simple. And you know, that simple is going to turn into crazy, awesome health accumulation. Uh, when you just keep on doing that simple day after day after day. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Yeah. Thank you, Courtney, for having us. Great. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to our podcast. I hope that you found this information valuable, and I hope that you were able to immediately use some of the information that was provided. Make sure to go check out our show notes for all of the links that we discussed today. As a mom, I understand that at times you can feel alone and are looking for that sense of community. Here at FormFit, I am bringing moms together in a healthy and supportive community. I would love for you to come join us over in our free Facebook community that is Form Fit Community. Join us over there where we can get to know you more or feel free to try out our membership free for seven days. It provides you with workouts, recipe guides, information on healthy hormones, healthy habits, posture information, accountability calls, and in-person and Zoom events. Plus, you can receive one-on-one training from me for 50% off. Find out all the information by going to formfitonline.com so that you can learn more. Now, go out and enjoy your day while practicing small, healthy choices that will make lasting changes. Mm -hmm.